I gave you the parent sequence, n over n plus 1 times sine of n pi over 4. Uh, this is a visualization of it. Here are some decimal approximations for the first 14 terms and a graphical depiction of the first 80 terms. Um, one of you noted that this looks like a, a stack of Christmas trees because that's Christmas, we have Christmas trees on the brain today. Um, is in addition to a little Charlie Brown tree here at the beginning. I like that. Um, okay, so my question to you was, after you've got a sense of what the pattern is for these terms, looking at their exact values, find me an example of a monotone, monotonic subsequence. Uh, so one group, give me an example of a monotonic subsequence uh, in this one. Tell me what, what are the indices of the terms that you chose, I guess is the way to do it. Maybe one way of finding a monotonic subsequence is to look at the first term, followed by the third term, followed by the ninth term, followed by the eleventh. Let's look at what that looks like on the graph. Um, that's that term there. The third term is right here. The ninth term is, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the eleventh term. And so how would you continue then? Like what would be the next term after the eleventh that you choose? It looks like you're kind of taking the top boughs on the Christmas tree, uh, if, if you like. So maybe this one, and then that one, and this one, and then that one, this one, and that one, right? So if I take all of the purple highlighted terms, it certainly looks like that forms a monotonic subsequence. Right? So just by taking the, the two top boughs on each Christmas tree as we go along, it looks like we get a monotonically increasing subsequence of this parent sequence. Uh, and so there, the terms, so just to, just to reinforce this idea in the definition of subsequence, there the terms that you're choosing, the n1 that's less than n2 is less than n3, the indices that you've chosen are 1, 3, 9, 11, and so forth. Right? So that's what's playing the role of those n sub k's for this example of a monotonic subsequence. Great. Your example is start with the term n sub 2 and then count by 8s. So 2, 10, after that it would be 18, 26, 34, 42, and so forth. Great, so you're taking not the boughs on the top of the trees, but the stars on the top of the trees, all right? To continue the holiday metaphor. So you're taking the tops of all these peaks, and the indices are 2, uh, 10, 18, 26, and so forth. Right, so that's another different monotonic subsequence uh, from inside of this. So here's a question that I have. Um, first of all, how do we know that both the purple subsequence and the blue subsequence, how do we know that those are going to be convergent subsequences? Bridget? We know these each are convergent subsequences because first of all, they were monotonic just by construction, by the way that you found them. They were monotonic. But also, how do we know that they're bounded? We know that any subsequence we choose is going to be a bounded subsequence because the whole original sequence is a bounded sequence. Namely, what is, a, what is an example of a bound on my entire sequence? What is Sn going to be always less than or equal to in absolute value? What, what about sine of n pi over 4? What's a bound on the absolute value of that? What is sine? of an angle always live between? Negative 1 and 1, because it's a y coordinate on the unit circle. What about n over n plus 1? If I take any fraction whose denominator is larger than the numerator, that's also going to be less than or equal to 1. And so this whole original sequence is less than or equal to 1 in absolute value. And on our graph, we notice that all the terms of this sequence live in between the horizontal line at 1 and the horizontal line at minus 1. So the entire sequence is bounded, and therefore any of its subsequences are going to be bounded. And so any monotonic subsequence that I choose is going to be a convergent subsequence uh, because it automatically inherits the boundedness from the boundedness of the parent sequence. Great. OK. So then to finish this example, so let's start with the blue sequence for a second, the sequence that's at the tops of each of the Christmas trees. What do we think is going to be the limit? If I call these my, let me not call them NKs, let me call these the NLs. What do we think is going to be the limit of that subsequence, SNL, as L tends to infinity? Negative 
What does it look like based on the picture? It looks like that limit is 1. If we want to be absolutely sure about that, let's just plug in the way that you constructed this sequence. NL is just going to be 2 plus 8L. Although I suppose if we want L equals 1 to be right here, I need to tweak this a little bit. Uh, let me make it 8L minus 6. We can check that when L is 1, I get 2. When L is 2, I get 10. When L is 3, I get 18. When L is 4, I get 26, and so on and so on. Um, so if I plug this expression into my SN formula, what I get, SNL, is 8L minus 6 over 8L minus 5. And then the sine of 8L minus 6 times pi over 4. But when I plug that in, I always get an angle that's at the very top of the unit circle, which is why we're at the top of these trees. Uh, and therefore, that sine is equal to 1 for all values of L. That's why this example works nicely, because the formula for this subsequence turns out to be this nice little thing. And then what's the limit of that as L goes to infinity? We can just use calculus principles. 8 over 8, otherwise known as 1. So the limit of the blue subsequence is 1. What about the purple subsequence? If those are my n k's, what do we believe about that limit? This one's a little more challenging, because I don't particularly feel like writing down a formula for nk. Um, it's a little bit harder to, to get down using algebra. Um, but just based on the decimal values, maybe, 0 0.35, 0 0.53, 0 0.636, 0 0.648. Um, I'll put this scratch work back up on the board in a minute, but let's suppose that we keep scrolling down and keep looking at those. So 0 0.679, 0 0.681. Uh, go a little further down, 0 0.696, 0 0.697, 0 0.6975, 0 0.6978. So what do we believe about the limit of that subsequence, approximately? We're not going to get an exact value out of this, but what do we think the limit might be? What's an educated guess? 7 over 10. Yeah, let's say 7 tenths. Yeah, let's make it a fraction, because fractions. Right? So we have actually here two subsequences of our parent sequence, and the two have different limits. So what's the first thing that that forces, by the way? If I have a parent sequence that has two different subsequential limits, what can I say about the original sequence? Does it converge? You hold the whole parent sequence? Yeah, the limit of the whole SN sequence. <coughs> Doesn't exist, right? And that's because... Uh, again, coming back to our, our material here, what we know about subsequences, jump down to further on down the page here. Uh, whoops, I'm in the wrong section. How did I get there? We know that any parent sequence which converges, all of its subsequences will converge to the same thing. Uh, jump down. Here we go. That's 2.2.3. If the parent sequence converges, then all of its subsequences also converge to that same limit. The contraposite, sorry, the, the, yeah, the contrapositive of that is that if I have two subsequences that converge to different things, that means the original parent sequence does not converge. That means that the SN parent sequence doesn't converge. But still, what we want to be able to do is come up with an idea of what are all of the different limits of all of the different subsequences of the sequence, and that's what's called the limit set, or sometimes the subsequential limit set of my sequence. It lists all possible limits of subsequences. All limits of convergent subsequences. And based on the work that you all did here, we know that that set is going to contain the element 1, because we found a subsequence which converges to 1. It's going to contain this number, which is approximately 7 tenths. By the way, spoiler alert, it's actually square root of 2 over 2. Um, 0.7071, dot, dot, dot. Um, and it might contain some other subsequential limits. But here's my last question for the day, which is where we're going to jump off. What is the largest value in this limit set going to be? 1. And that largest value in the limit set is what we call the limit superior limit superior, lim soup of Sn, lim soup. It's the same as the soup 
of the limit set, and in this example, the soup of the limit set is 1. Any convergent subsequence at all of this parent sequence will have a limit which is no bigger than 1. And that's what we call the limit soup. By that definition, what do you think is the limb inf? The limit inferior for the sequence? Yeah, the limit inf of the sequence will be negative 1 because we can find a subsequence which converges to negative 1, but we can't find any subsequences which converge to something less than negative 1. So that's our quick introduction to limb soup and limb inf. Um, and in the, the section on this, there's a lot of different ways of understanding it as well.